brethren in the Lord, I'm very happy to be with you this evening to testify to you what God has done to me. Since two months ago, there's no Thursday that I will be here that my trouble will not be mentioned. Because since last two, since, uh, last two years, there was somebody in a place of market with me. And she, she gripped me. So since then, everything started going wrong with me. I thought that it touched even my health. That when people see me, they will not know that I am a villain again. So I, uh, having the faith in Christ Jesus, I am even a, uh, ashamed to tell my husband that I am not well. And he's seeing me quite all right. So every day, people will continue coming to me, asking me, why are you like that? Do you mean that you will continue serving God and die like this? I say to them, you live up. Because I know whom I'm serving is a great God. That he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. So until, until last, uh, last two Sundays ago, sisters came to me again, my, my earthly sisters. They were giving me all sorts of suggestions, but I said no. That since I have decided to go with Christ Jesus, that I will not go back. So after that, I, I was even asking my God that you are the Lord of Shadrach, Bishak, and Abandon. That what you did to them, Papa, I want you to manifest thyself unto me. That thing that you did to Daniel, do such to me so that the world will know that you are the living one I'm serving. It is true that nobody can see you and live. I have none of that. But Father, talk to me so that you encourage my prayers and my faith in you. So, even last three Thursdays, please, when I came, Brother mentioned that people that evil hand touched, that it was about two years ago, that since then everything scattered. <coughs> but the evil man came and deceived me not to raise up my hand. So after that day, I said, okay, Papa, whatever that you decided to do to my life, you must do it. So when I was praying that you must talk to me, I said, talk to me direct so that I will know that you are with me and that you have not left me alone. So last Thursday, I was surprised to hear my name mentioned here, Evelyn, that it is finished. So my, my advice to you newcomers is to hold on God. Never you go back because it's a living God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She was touched by evil men and for a period of two months she kept on coming and coming and coming and she got the answer. So you keep on coming and you'll get the answer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 81. Well, from then there was no issue. Then I was praying, I was praying, but to call the series job because of time. Last year, that like the September, my work, my wife get up that he, he will not, she will not pray again because of time. But that very month now they say we are going to have freedom retreat. Say so we came here because we know that God is going to do perform miracle, even though we've got many pressure from family that we should come home and do something to do medicine, but we determine that whether Satan like it or not, we are not going to use even tablets because God is able to do all things. So then they invited me home. They said they, will, they must do something. I said, well, God, this, they should, God is going to make them know that he is able to do all things. So that last year, freedom retreat, my wife came here, he met one of our counselors. Then they prayed for her. Well, for God so good, that very man, God does it. And he, he, and she will be ready now. On the fourth day of that particular thing, Satan said, eh, you are rejoicing. Because he have tried during the her pregnancy to snatch my wife away. But we thank the Lord that one of our sisters introduced faith clinic, deeper life faith clinic to me, that we have got cleaning. So for God so good, during the period, we do not use any medicine or tonic or anything. Through prayer, she got delivered. And on the fourth day again, Satan said he wants to snatch my own life away. I came here around Bagara to come and inform my brethren in the Lord that God had done it. On my way to Ojot, after I've left here, said that I had not known that Satan had cast me on my, in my own. I was unable to pray. I could not remember. I even, I did not hold my Bible. Then on, my, on the machine, the Spirit of God comes to me. Have you prayed? 
Where is your Bible? I got shocked. Then I have to pack my machine. I up my helmet. I prayed. Then I will say, well, even though I have not with Bible, but the word within me is able to carry me through. So then on my way, Zedan came to me and said, hey, people are rejoicing at home, not knowing that the father of the child have gone. I say in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going nowhere. I'm not, I'm not going to die, but to live. But on the way to the on the, on the bridge, on the Yala Road River there, said the tire of the machine just turned to the extent that on this full speed, I just found myself blind in the ground. Drawing away, but so, to my own surprise, I woke up, I rolled the machine on my head, I said, Am I still living to thee to be glory? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I also have bone fracture here. But when they get the hospital to say, Well, they have to bomb me, I say, Lord, I'm not going to use anything. So far, you told Ezekiel to, to the dry bone, and it's God here. Surely, God is going to heal my bone. So, wonderfully. The thing God joins together without anything. And not only that, the second the next Saturday, they asked us to come and walk at Bagada here. Then I came here. Said, I said, ah, remember, that thing I've just joined together. If you handle Jigga now, the thing is going to break again. I said, let it break, God is going to heal it. Then I handled Jigga and I did Jigga and nothing happened. Since then I've been here. Praise the Lord. Isn't God wonderful? Praise God. I got married on October last year. That was 82. When I got married, I stayed for the first three months. We have been expecting a pregnancy for the first three months. There was no result. <clears throat> we went to a medical doctor for a checkup. There was no result. Until a certain time, when my husband went to their working place, he got an invitation from my brother for the couple seminar. So during that time we have prepared and have concluded with my husband that after the sixth month, and that May when the couple seminar was held, made it the sixth month, we have concluded that after this sixth month now, if there is no change, we will go to negative doctor. And if after going to the negative doctor, I have to get pregnant, nobody should come to us again with the name of God because the God doesn't answer prayers. So when we attended this couple seminar, when it was the time for problem solving, we went to the place that was prepared for those that were barren and those that were afflicted. The brother prayed to us. The Holy Spirit came into my mind that I had to confess. I was so sorrowful that day, I had to confess my sins. After confessing my sins, my heart was just very light and very clear that I was very happy. The brother prayed to us. The place I concentrated more was on Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 to 5. When I read through that passage, I was very glad. I said, today, God has answered my prayer. Amen. So when we were about to close, the brother and us, we prayed very earnestly to God. And the brother promised us that if we should believe God today, he gives us only 50 days for any one of us here who is, who is looking for a child to get pregnant. I was just laughing, just like Sarah did. I said, how is this man promising us just 50 days? I was just laughing. I said, OK. If God is our God, if God is the most high, as people say, let me know. Let it be fulfilled in me today. Then we went home. So before that 50 days could complete, I got pregnant. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I thank God for what he has done for me. I've come to testify for what God has done for me and for his glory. Really, I'm very happy right now. My joy is full. And I plead that I be given permission for the benefit of others so that they benefit from what I have to say. Well, the devil has been tormenting our family and myself in particular. The devil came into our family in form of polygamy for you who have more than one wife. Then when this devil came, we have been having a very nice homely family. But when the devil came in the form of polygamy, all of us were thrown out of the house. I was made mad. I was, I was made insane. I became mentally, psychologically, physically, and everything insane. Though people will not see it physically, but internally I'm dead. Then, at that time, I had a very bright future. I was to further my education, but when this devil came in, my education was to be, it was forgotten in, in, uh, in short. So it was a battle of life and death. Then I started from all these um, religious courses. I went from one religious course to another. I went to the um, Babich. 
to um, streams. I did many things, but to no avail. Then I went to the doctors. I went to Yabas Mental Hospital. Dr. Rija was the one who first attended to me there. Armed Forces Psychiatric Hospital. I was even discharged last Thursday. And many other places. Then I even went to Herbalist, Oracles, and even to Afas and all these allergies. But all came to no avail. Then I became disappointed. I said, well, I'm just looking for the day when I will die. Then my people, the devil has drove my mother and all the other children away from the home. So I also left the home. But I said, well, I should have to come to this home. I came to my father's home. But the problem was there. My senior brother, everybody has pledged. They fled, they flee. They can't come to the home. Then it was one day I was offered admission because I had the prospect of going to higher institution. I was offered admission to go and read political science at University of Benin. Then I went to a friend that to tell him about the admissions thing because that was the last opportunity I had. I said, I've got admission now, but I'm still sick. Then the, boy, the friend said that he's coming for a, a program here that at that time they were inviting the religious leaders, and that was December 81. That why can't I follow him down so I will be discussing this thing to him. So I came here unconsciously. I don't have the deliberate uh, attempt of coming here. So when I came, that was not the purpose of my coming. So after coming, I went back. I didn't come again, but I have a sister here whom we work together. So when I told him how my problem, I said, why can't you be coming? So from that time, I don't choose to come. I only come occasionally when I feel like, because I feel that there is no way for me again. So it was during the single seminar program that I came again. Then there was seminars. I went for the Your Life and Your Health seminar. On getting there, the doctor, Christian doctors told us everything about how to keep healthy. Then after that, we are all of us assembled and we are prayed for by brother. Then they said those who have problems in their life that they should raise up their hand. I raised up my hand. We were asked to wave the hand. I started waving it. Then later we were asked to come forward. And that was what I was afraid of, that I don't want to come forward. Reluctantly I came forward. Then later us we were prayed for and then we were asked to go to the Yoruba class. Then they discussed the, the pray, um, there was a program on uh, pillars and caterpillars of marriage. I said, this also concerns my family. My own problem is there. My family's problem is there. So immediately after the whole program, I discovered that a load that has been in my head just disappeared like that. <laughs> then, I was so glad I got home. I started telling people that God is great. God is great. I, started, I don't know anything. A person who has been mentally insane, I started telling them. They said, this religion wants to get you crazy. I said, don't worry. So that's how I started. Then after some time now, I see many things happening. Then I start calling my people together. My mother, I called him. I said, all right, I want to reconcile you and my father. They thought I was joking. I reconciled them. Later on, let me in short, God has healed me completely. I'm okay. And the joy and the peace of the family that has been lost since 1976 has really come back. And now we are enjoying the fullness of God in the house. So praise God for me, all of you. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now one thing we should take note is the testimonies that are being given are problems that you might have brought here. But you are hearing what God has done as a result of the simply believing in the name of Jesus. Tonight you make up your mind that your own will come. And it will come in Jesus' name. Bless God! A great miracle work in my life. And this speaking, before this child is not able to walk. So I tried for many years. I carried out to a native daughter and spent a lot of money for her. There's no help. So then when I come to Lagos, one sister tell me that there's a revival in Bagana. Although I used to I used to go short and play and before when the problem come press me down, I love you, I love you to pray again. For me to pray, I begin to cry. Then I, I start to come here and I write many prayer requests. Anywhere when the children of God gather and pray, I used to dear and pray. I say, God help me. When I come here, when I had many testimonies, I begin to ask God, say, God, you they do all this all this miracle work for people. What of my God? What did I do if you know my sin? Forgive me, my God. So I thank God. I go write a prayer request. I go help me. The shell now is now working. This is my testimony. I want you to help me thank God. Praise God!
Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we rise up? Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise your name. We glorify you because of the greatness of your own work. We worship you because of the greatness of your love. We thank you because of Calvary. We praise you because of the cross. We thank you because of the atonement. And we praise you because you love the world so much. You do not want anyone to perish. You want every one of us to have eternal life. We're remembering and rejoicing in this country that many years ago, some people fought the battle. They wrote, they talked, they spoke, they did everything they could do to make sure that this country will have independence. But we remember Calvary, that somebody suffered in agony. He bled, he was crucified, he went through pain and torture and torment. He was crowned with a crown of sons. He was nailed to the cross. He prayed, he cried, he groaned that the world that is bound, bound in sin, bound by Satan, will be set free and receive freedom and independence. And that is why we're here today, that souls that are bound, bodies that are bent low, hearts that are in bondage, will come in an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will be saved and delivered. And Father, we're asking you that from this very night, from this very moment, you will deliver in Jesus' name. How we're asking you that you will save sinners, that no matter the habit of sin that are binding them, you will save and deliver them in Jesus' name. And Father, we are asking that your power, the power of the Holy Ghost, will be manifested so much in this meeting today, Amen. tomorrow Friday, Amen. and on Saturday, Amen. and on Sunday, Amen. and on Monday, Amen. that the powers of darkness will be broken in Jesus' name. Amen. And as the feet of tormented, sick people touch this place, the power of God from the, from the highest will touch them and destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking that you show us the reason why Jesus Christ was manifested tonight. Amen. Destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Deliver sinners. Amen. Save souls. Amen. Heal the sick. Amen. And touch everyone's heart. Amen. Walk wonders this night. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, we want to know what happens when saints pray. When saints pray, Satan panics. Tomorrow we're going to look at what God meant, what God intended, and what God did when he said, let my people go. But tonight it is when saints pray, Satan panics. And we know that as we look at the word of God on saints praying, Satan panicking. We're going to see people delivered tonight. Amen. We're going to see the sick healed miraculously in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's in Matthew chapter 16. From verse 15, that Jesus asked an important question from the saints of that time. The believers are the people that the Bible calls saints. And it is the same question that the Lord is asking tonight. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. He says unto them, Whom say ye that I am? He, the Savior, says unto them, the saints, whom say ye that I am? You must know the Savior, and then you will know the saints. If you know who the Savior is, you will know what the saints have. 
If you know what the Savior has done, you will know what the saints can accomplish. If you know the majesty and the glory and the power of the Savior, you will know the boldness and the fearlessness and the authority and the power of the saints. If you know the Savior that was lifted up, you will see the saints that is marching forward. If you know the Savior that has overcome, you will know the saints that are victorious. And if you know the Savior who cannot be defeated, you will know the saints who will stand on their problems and on principalities and powers. But before you know the Savior, you will not be able to know who the saints are, what the saints can have, and what the saints can do. And there are many people who do not know the Savior, what he did, what he said, what he can do, what he is saying today. He, the Savior, said unto them, the saints, whom say ye that I am? Do you know that is the crucial question today, the important question today? Who do you say the Savior is? To you, what did he do on the cross of Calvary? What is the outcome of the suffering, the crying from Calvary? What do you see to be the benefit of the shedding of blood of the Savior on the cross? Here comes the answer. And Simon Peter answered, and said unto him, and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Son. You know he was not taught that by priests, chief priests, Pharisees, Sadducees, religious people, but he knew that because he had prayed. He had confessed his sins to the Lord. He had asked for forgiveness. And the Lord had forgiven him. He had become a child of God. And the Father God in heaven had received him as a child. And because of that, the Father was in communion, fellowship with him. And he knew something that the Pharisees did not know. He knew something that Sadducees did not know. And I want to tell you tonight, I know something that religious people in this city, in this country, do not know. I know something that great men, scientists, philosophers do not know. I know about the defeat of Satan. I know about the exaltation of the Savior. I know about the all-sufficiency of the power of the living God. And I know Christ to be the Son of the living God. And that's knowledge. That's something that delivers you, saves you, relieves you from all the pain you may have. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. By the way, what does he mean by flesh and blood? He means lecturer and teacher. Lecturers are flesh and blood. Am I right? Yes. School teachers are flesh and blood. Library books are written by flesh and blood. Seminaries are built, erected, maintained by flesh and blood. Ecclesiastical denominational orders are maintained by flesh and blood. Ideologies and policies are propounded, written, explained, applied, extended to people by flesh and blood. And Jesus had this to say, Simon Peter, you've got something that flesh and blood 
has not have not revealed unto you not human teachers or lecturers or religious preachers have revealed this unto you but my father which is in heaven and this is where we're going verse 18 look at it think on it assimilate it take it in this is your victory because Jesus said when saints stand Satan falls when saints pray Satan hunts when saints command Satan has to obey and wherever you find a saint there is a trembling Satan around wherever you find a saint closing the eyes looking up with the eyes of the mind and of the spirit quietly saying unto God my father which art in heaven sickness is flying away wherever you see a saint looking at the Bible and holding on to a promise of God and you'll find that saint saying here I stand I will never be moved the devil Satan is moving away verse 18 and I say unto you thou art Peter upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it the gates of hell the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of the living God well you say but I know churches that witches and wizards have destroyed yes that shows you that you call that a church but Jesus said I didn't build that one if I built it the gates of hell cannot prevail against it you say I know a group of people and in fact they sing they pray and I see that the witches and the wizards touched one of the elders and they have made that elder to be totally down to the ground well Jesus said if I build that church if you give me an opportunity to come into your midst and build a church in the city of Lagos the gates of hell the principalities and powers the powers of darkness shall never be able to prevail against the church and I thank God I am in that church you see can you tell me the name of the church I can tell you the Savior's Church it's not on the corner of your street it's not on the road going to any place all those who are washed by the blood of the Savior all those who have received the promises of the Savior all those who have touched the Savior with the hand of sin and they have asked the Savior cleanse me they come into the Savior's Church and the Savior begins to build that church he begins to build that church with lively stones. Immediately you confess all your sins to God and you say, Oh God, I am a sinner. Deliver me and save me and forgive me. Remove all my sins. I will sin no more. I will not go in the ways of the world anymore. The hand of the Lord will touch you. The blood of Jesus will wash you. The Spirit of God will be a witness in your heart. All the load and burden of sin will be removed. And there will be joy in the heart. That is called the joy of salvation and you become a member of the body of Christ a member of the Savior's church look at it again verse 18 and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter upon this rock I will build my church I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it they will fight but they will not prevail they will come but they will not prevail they will attempt to harm you to come against you 
to curse you, to put something on you, but it will not affect you. Upon this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The Savior, the saints, Satan. The Savior died on the cross of Calvary to save a sinner and make him a saint when he confesses and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ so that that saint will stand in the victory of the Savior that he accomplished on the cross of Calvary and the devil, Satan, has to bow down. When saints pray, I repeat, Satan panics. When saints pray, I repeat, Satan is defeated. When saints stand, Satan falls. And when saints command, Satan has to obey. But have you been to Calvary? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? As the Savior touched you, saved you, forgiven you, removed your sin, as he turned you from a sinner unto a saint. And in verse 19, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What a man becomes when he gives his life to Jesus Christ. What a man receives when he kneels now at the feet of the cross and he says, Just as I am, I come, I come. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Would you let the blood and the water that flowed from the riven side be of sin, the double kill? Oh yes, I know, could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no respite? No, I know that for sure. All these for sins cannot atone. Savior, Savior, my Lord, my Savior, the one who died for me, thou and thou alone can save. And I want you to save me now. What happens then? When the blood flows gently into your heart, when the tears come down your cheek, when the burden of sin presses you down, when you call on the Lord, I am coming, I am coming, just as I am. Only one plea I have, forgive me, pardon me, remove all my sins. Before you knelt down, you were a sinner. But I can assure you, before you rise up, before you rise up, people may not know what has happened, but the angels and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they do not call you sinner anymore. You become a saint, a child of God, a man of God. You have received an inheritance from God. You have received the forgiveness of your sin. And from that time, you begin to study the word of God. And the more you know of the Savior, the more confidence you have as a saint. And I tell you, when you stand, when you stand, you stand on both feet. You are bold because the righteous is as bold as a lion. And then you have something. You have the key. What's the key meant for? To lock and to unlock. What does he lock? He locks doors. What are doors meant for? To enter and also to come out. And there are times that the devil goes about seeking whom he may devour. And you have the key. You can lock the door against him. There are times human beings have been bound, locked up in prison. And you take the key, you open the door, and you deliver the oppressed, and you send out the captives from captivity. And when you become a saint, here is the word of the Lord for you. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever, 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 Thou shalt bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. When you become a saint, when you become a child of God, there is a link between earth and heaven. 
There is a link between you, the saint, and the Savior in heaven. There is a link between your faith and the supply in heaven. You bind here. It's bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And that's the word of God for tonight. If we lock anything up tonight, it's locked in heaven. And when we tell the devil, you cannot go beyond this point, he dare not, he will not. And when we tell sickness in your body, and we bring you into the opportunity or privilege of the kingdom of heaven, and we say sickness, move out of that place, do you know that that sickness cannot change what we say? Because we have the word of authority. We have the word of power. And we have whatever we say here on earth performed and confirmed in heaven. I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Luke chapter 10 verse 16 Luke chapter 10 verse 16 He that heareth you heareth me. He that despises you despises me. He that despises he, me despises him that sent me. Pick up that sentence. Analyze it in your heart. Meditate upon it. When a preacher speaks, sinners hear, saints hear, Satan hears, the Savior himself hears, God in heaven hears, the Spirit of God hears. And he that hears you, hears me talking. He that despises what you say, despises what I say and he that despises what I say despises him that sent me when a saint prays it's like the Savior praying and the devil trembles as if Jesus Christ himself came back to command to challenge and to cast out the devil. Verse 17. And the 70 returned again with with what? God. And that's how we are going to return home today. Amen. The 70 returned again with what? God. There were only 70 of them. All the seventy saw the Savior, met the Savior, received from the Savior, and they went out from the Savior, and they came back to the Savior, and they came with joy. And as many as come tonight to the Savior, listens to the Savior, talks with the Savior, accepts what the Savior is saying, receives the Savior, will go back home with joy. The seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils, even the devils, even the devils. What does that mean? What you say? Even the drunkard. You have said, the smokers, the fornicators, and all the others. 
And in fact, even the one that became almost like a wild animal when I spoke, he listened. And so when the saints came and they said, even the devil, that means the witches finished. Wizards finished. Sickness finished. Calamity finished. Diseases finished. And we even, even the Satan, even the devil, even demons, they were subject unto us through thy name. And that name has never lost its power. Yes. The power in the name of Jesus Christ. At the time when the 70 went out, that power is still in the name of Jesus tonight. And when we call the name Jesus, Satan has to go. Yes. Sickness has to leave. Yes. Pains had to go. Yes. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nothing, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Let's see somebody. Mark chapter 5. From verse 1. And it came over. Unto the other side of the sea. Into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship. Immediately there met him out of the tombs. A man. With an unclean spirit remember when saints pray satan panics when saints command satan has to obey when saints stand satan falls verse 3 this man had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. They didn't have the key to bind or to lose. They were trying to do it with natural power. They were trying to do it with natural intelligence, force, psychology, brainwashing. It didn't work. There's only one type of brainwashing that you should be interested in. The washing of water by the word. To wash your mind of all the dirty things that has ever been there. But no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plugged asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man, any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones when he saw Jesus afar off when he saw Jesus Christ afar off he ran and worshipped him he was a sinner Satan has to flee. When the sinner begins to bow. Because the Savior will command. And here we find a sinner. Bowing down. You will soon see. The Savior commanding Satan to come out. And you will see Satan flee. Coming out. Departing. The sinner bows. The sinner repents. The sinner submits. The sinner gives himself. When he is the sinner. Saw so Jesus the Savior, a part of, he ran and he worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee? Who is the one crying? The devil inside. Not wanting this man to be delivered. 
who is the one kicking the devil inside. Not wanting this man to be confronted by the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there is anything that is resisting the word in you, it's not you. It's the one you have made the Lord of your life. Satan. If there is anything rejecting the word of God in you, it's not you. If you would reject the word of God, you wouldn't have come. You want something. Your heart is looking for something. You are desirous to have the Savior come to reign in your life. But as soon as you came, there's something that is saying within you. Disbelieve. 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 It's not you. It's the one on the inside. But he will come out. Amen. He will have to come out. Amen. Because when saints pray, Satan trembles, Satan panics, and Satan flees. And when you as a sinner, when you bow the knee, when you say, Oh Savior, here am I, deliver me, save me. I want you and I need you now. Satan has no choice, he has to leave. You were not created for him. Your body was not created to be a house or home for, the, for, the, for Satan. He has to leave. And I know tonight, he has to go away in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 8. For he, the Savior, hath said unto him, unto Satan, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Come out of the man. Thou unclean spirit. We don't have to say it many times. Just once is enough. Then we stand our ground. Having done all to stand. Having given the commandment to stand. Having issued out the decree against Satan to stand. And if you stand, having your loins girt about with truth. Knowing the truth of God. Knowing that when saints pray, Satan panics. Satan leaves. Satan flees. When saints stand, that's the truth. Guard yourself with it. Guard your loins. Guard your mind. Guard your spirit. Guard your meditation. Guard your thoughts with the truth of the word of God. When saints pray, Satan has no other choice. He has to leave. When saints stand, Satan has no other choice. He has to to fall. And when saints command, Satan has no other choice. He has to obey. Jesus says unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion. For we are many in this man. We are the spirits responsible for not allowing him to ever want to sleep on the bed. We confuse him. And eventually, he sleeps on the ground. We are the spirits that do not allow him to live in the house he has built. We make him a, a runaway builder. He's built a house, but he's running about. Helter skelter. We are the spirits that feel his heart and his brain and mind with fear. And we are the ones that drive him to the graveyard to cut himself, to hurt himself, to destroy himself. We are many. Our name is Legion, they said. And he besought him much that he will send them away out. He will not send them away out of the country. Now, there was near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. Well, for those um, who are in love with the pigry and you know you're wondering why the pigs are allowed to be scattered, well, let's rejoice in the salvation of this man to start with. Let's forget the pigs to uh, as at now. One soul is more important than all the world put together. This one single man is more than all the pigs, all the swine put together. So let's not uh, get into sympathy with animals now. Let's rejoice because a man has been delivered. And if you come next time, then you may have the opportunity of 
knowing about what happened to the pigs and why were they, you know, cast into the river. But as at now, we're interested in the sinner that bowed down, the Savior that gave the command, and the Satan that flee away. And in verse 15, And when they come to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting, clothed, and in his right mind, they were afraid. And you'll be your right mind tonight. Amen. If there's any problem in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, it's going to go away. Amen. Because the saints are going to pray. And Satan is going to flee. The saints are going to command. And Satan is going to obey. The saints are going to open the door. And you are going to come out of your prison house. And the saints are going to lock the door against your sickness and disease and demons worrying and tormenting you. And you are going to be set free. The sick will be healed tonight. And those who are sinners who want to bow the knee before the Lord Jesus Christ, they are going to be delivered. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. So that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the accepted time. This is the right moment for sicknesses to flee. This is the time for miracles to come down. For signs to be wrought. For Satan who has been tormenting people here to receive the command and to flee away. Rise up and let us pray. I want to give you some chance if you are a sinner. Remember, bow the knee. Come before the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord and say, here am I. And tonight, you'll be saved. You will be healed. You will be delivered. And Satan is going to be put to shame tonight on your behalf in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, sinners, you confess your sin to God. And saints, you confess your position to God. Sinners, confess your sins to God. Saints, confess your position to God. Your authority, your power, your privilege. What you have from the cross of Calvary. Tell the, tell the Lord. Let the saints pray. Let sinners confess their sins unto the Lord. And the Lord will pardon you. He'll forgive you. He'll remove your sins. He'll wash you whiter than snow. wants to deliver the oppressed tonight yes. and he wants to heal the sick tonight yes. and of course he wants to save sinners yes. that is the greatest blessing you can receive the salvation of your soul yes. and I want to ask you if you know that you're a sinner if you know you're a sinner and that is not too difficult to know if you know you're a sinner and you want to bow the knee to the Savior you want the Savior to remove all your sins you want to be free from the bondage and the shackles of your sin. And you want to be really free, truly free. And you are believing that after the prayer. You will be saved. Real salvation. The Bible one. And you believe that this is your own time. This is your own time. To, to believe the Lord and to repent and to confess and to give yourself to the Lord and to be saved. 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 Would you just raise up your hand wherever you are? You want to be free from sin. That is what it means. 
You want to be free from adultery, from fornication, from smoking, from drinking, from evil having, from lying, from deceiving people, from cheating, from giving bribes, from corruption, from immorality. You want to be free, really free and truly free. That means you want to leave all your sins. You are not interested in them anymore. And the life you used to live, you will not live like that anymore. And you will now commit yourself to the Lord. Say, Lord, here am I. Forgive me. Pardon me. Save me. Remove my sins. I want you to do that right now. If you are raising up your hand, you want to be saved, you want your sins to be taken away, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. If you mean it, he'll save you. If you mean it, he'll save you. He'll remove your sins. He'll remove your sins. He'll remove your sins. If you mean it. If you mean it. If you have decided, he will do it. He will do it if you have decided. Say, here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Save me. Forgive me. Take all my sins away. And set me free from the power of sin. And from the penalty of sin. Father in heaven, we thank you because of your love. It is not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and receive eternal life. We are asking that as many as have genuinely and truly, wholeheartedly confessed their sins to you, forsaken their sins, not wanting to continue in their sins, and they want forgiveness. From the Lord, believing that Jesus Christ died for them on the cross of Calvary. I am asking that you will forgive them tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that the assurance that you have forgiven them. The assurance that they have got that salvation. And the evidence of the new life will come into them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray that the Spirit of God will bear witness with their hearts. Amen. That from now on they are children of God. Amen. Confirm that in their hearts. Amen. Change their lives. Amen. Make sin to be hateful to them from this very day. Amen. And grant them the privilege, Amen. the right Amen. to begin to live a new life from this very night. Amen. We believe you cannot fail. Yes. We believe you cannot lie. Yes. We believe that as they have sincerely asked you and they have believed that the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe you have saved them. Yes. Confirm that word in their hearts. Yes. Thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now there's someone there that has um, trouble by evil spirits. Trouble by evil spirits. In the night, the trouble is so much that you are afraid to sleep at night. And in fact, when the night is coming, you'll be saying, well, it's a pity it's getting dark again. And during the day, it is not that you are free either, but you prefer the day to the night. And because of that, you've been having sleepless nights. 
and there is fear within you as well. If you are that person, if you want to be delivered now, remember when saying stand, Satan falls. Yes. And if you are that person, you want to be delivered, just shoot up your hand, raise up your hand, and the deliverance is yours right now. Right now. Right now. Because he has given us the key. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is loose in heaven. And if we tell Satan to leave, he has no choice. He has to go. He has to go. He has to go. One of you four o'clock this morning, you woke up and you are so sad and sorrowful and say, is this how my life is going to end? And it's been happening for days. But four o'clock this morning, you just woke up and the sorrow was so much, the trouble was so much, that this evil spirit, they will not leave me alone. I don't have money, I don't have house. What do I have that they are pursuing me? If you are that one among those who are raising up their hands, can you wave that hand? Okay, God bless you. Amen. Your deliverance is here right now. Because the saints are praying and because the Savior is here, you will be delivered right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father in heaven, we come against the devil. We come against Satan. That old serpent, the dragon. I come against him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I come against him by the power of the Lord. I come against him by the blood of Jesus Christ. I come against him by the victory of the cross. I come against him by what Jesus Christ has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. And I stand there and I command and I decree that you, Satan, you flee away in Jesus' name. Yes, I want you to leave. All you demons, all you evil spirits. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who has come to break the power of the enemy, who has come to break and to bruise the head of the devil, who has come to drive all demons and satans away, who has come to relieve the oppressed, who has come to deliver the captives, who has come to make those who are not able to sleep to sleep, who has come to heal the sick, I come in that name, in the majestic name, in the glorious name, and I come in the blood that is thrown from Calvary, and I command you, Satan, get out in Jesus' name. And I pray that all fear, all bondage, will go out right now in Jesus' name. That person that is afraid that this sin is caught, was caused by your mother, now remove that fear. And I break that power. And I, and I say that you are delivered right now in Jesus' name. Well, you came back that other person from work in the afternoon. And because of a little quarrel in the place of work and that person threatened you. And um, you came back home and immediately you, back, you began to feel it. And the person did not hide it. And I tell you that right now all that power is neutralized. The power of darkness is broken. And you are set free. And free in Jesus' name. Father, I pray and plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon all these people. That you sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon them. And that from now on, all this fear and sleeplessness and, and all the trouble will not be upon them anymore. I thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I have you to be quiet for some time. Among some of you who are raising up your hand, and as one of you, your heart is, you know, very light now, and you're joyful, and you feel like uh, crying and shouting and laughing at the same time. Can I see your hand if you're that person? God bless you. Amen. 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 There's somebody here who has been threatened by a witch and the person told you, I will show you who I am. And you've been in trouble. And you have been in trouble. Are you are making up your mind, should I raise up my hand? Should I not raise up my hand? Don't be ashamed. Why not be delivered tonight? 
that person threatened you. That person threatened you. And since that time, it's been so much upon you. And you don't, in fact, you don't think you'll succeed in life. Yes? If you raised up your hand before, don't raise up your hand now. Just believe that already, that's already settled, but there's another person, a witch, threatened you. He told you, he said, you'll see me, you'll see my hand. And since that time, your trouble has been upside, your, your life has been upside down. Please, if you are, raise up your hand, please. I see one hand, but I see another person. I see more hands, but I'm giving you opportunity. I want this to be the last night you suffer. There's a woman in the Yoruba class um, whose um, womb has been, well, we'll say sealed, and um, You've been going to herbalist before and they told you that except they did something, you'll never be free. Please interpret to them and let the woman raise up her hand and you'll be delivered right now. Yeah. Let the woman raise up her hand in the Yoruba section there. Would interpreters tell me if there's any hand there? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Tonight I am angry against the devil in a special way. And I refuse that anybody that comes here tonight will go back home tormented or depressed by the devil. And we are not taking it easy with the devil tonight. I stand here in the power of the Almighty God. I stand here under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I do not want anybody who has been threatened by the devil, by witches or wizards, or who the hand of the world has touched anybody. I don't want any of, that, any of such people going back home without being delivered. And I'm coming against all these powers tonight. Because the Lord assured me that when the saints stand, the Satan, Satan will have to fall. Yes. And when saints pray, Satan will have to leave. Yes. And we're going to pray right now. And all these people who are raising up their hands, you are going to be delivered. Yes. There is no doubt about it, you are going to be delivered. Yes. And that woman in the Yoruba class raising up her hand, this is the day of your joy. Yes. Amen. Well, I see those hands again, those who have been raising up their hands. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the victory. The Savior has died on the cross of Calvary. The Savior has bruised the head of the devil on the cross of Calvary. Our Savior has given us the victory. And I stand here with the victory, in the victory, and I know that Satan will have to go. And I pray that all these people who are raising up their hands, who have been tortured, tormented by the devil, through witches and wizards, and some people have terrified them, what is man? That we should ever fear any man. What has the devil been able to do through a man? That we will fear who witches and wizards are. I break that power tonight. I destroy that power tonight. And I pray as I stand here in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That any sin that has been used against all these men and all these women, every sin will be destroyed in Jesus' name. And I'm asking, especially, 
that the water that came out of the riven side of the Lord Jesus Christ will get into all these people now and wash the heart, the mind, the souls of all these people. And Father, I pray that your hand will reach into their hearts now and remove every bit of fear from their hearts in Jesus' name. And I pray that that woman in the Yoruba class who knew that she has been doomed and sealed and people are terrified her, I pray that right now, Lord, you'll work out a sign right in her tummy that she will know that the hand of the Almighty God has touched her. Yeah. Father, I pray that whatever, it is, whatever is there will move out right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now you devil, power, demon power, here I stand in the name of the Lord. Move out in Jesus' name! Amen. And whatever has been hidden there to bind, to destroy, this child of God, Father, I remove it in Jesus' name! Amen. And I pray that the showers of blessing from heaven Amen. will come upon all these people right now. Amen. Thank you, Father, because I know you have done it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 There's already a change in that woman in the Yoruba class, interpreter. Interpreter, um, help me ask her when we were praying. It looks like something moved out and um, she was wondering, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? <laughs> Interpreter, is the hand up? is still on the throne. Yeah. Our God has not changed. Yeah. I'm asking those um, who have been barren for a long time, and you believe that God is able? You believe that God is able? Yeah. You believe that God is able? Yeah. Raise up your hand and we'll pray for you. With God, all things are possible. Yeah. With God, all things are possible. Put down your hand. Somebody is having headache. Let's settle that. Why is that person having headache? Raise up the hand. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, all these uh, people who are having this problem right now, I ask that you pour your cool water upon their heads. And I pray that the headache will vanish away. Yes, it will go. There is no small sickness before you. You revealed it because you want to solve it. And I pray that it be removed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know it is good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Now, let's come back to it. Those who are raising up their hands on behalf of women who are barren. Father in heaven, we thank you. Because with you all things are possible. And I am asking that all these people who are raising up their hands will have the desires of their hearts met in Jesus' name. Open the wombs of these women. Give them the joy of their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Satan, clear out of the way in Jesus' name. Amen. And all that powers clear away in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that everything that is out of order, 
in the bodies of, and the lives of the husbands and the wives uh, concerned will come into proper order spiritually and physically in Jesus' name. Amen. We magnify you because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.